Hello everyone, welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I wanted to create a place where people can go to to get inspired, get motivated, or find some clarity and get tools to create a radically loved life. I will do my best to provide information on a variety of subjects, including yoga, holistic health, life coaching, spirituality, meditation, and overall mindful living. Each episode will bring you some of the world's best spiritual leaders, entrepreneurs, yoga teachers, coaches, along with some of my closest friends, and we will talk about their life experiences and journeys to create something more out of their lives and how they continue to grow to make that happen. Hey guys, Rosie here. I just want to say I am so grateful that you're listening. We are just getting a massive amount of response on this podcast, and I am so grateful that you're a part of this radically loved community, that you're enjoying the content and that you're enjoying all the guests and that you're still here and you're still working on yourself and your journey and your path. And I pray that you've received some tools listening to the guests or listening to any of my ideas or topics on meditation or yoga and how these tools can help you create a life of purpose to continue to help us give you the best content, you can subscribe to this podcast. And most of the time you can just do it from your phone, from iTunes, click subscribe and write a review. This really helps us continue this path and this journey. And we love doing it so much. And again, I'm so grateful that you're here. Let us know what you thought. Thanks for listening. One cup of tea is all it's going to take to completely transform your perception of what premium tea should be. For those of you who are tea lovers like me, I'm so excited to announce my partnership with Rishi Tea for this amazing giveaway. Rishi Tea is going to give away an entire matcha essentials kit. All you have to do is go on Instagram, tag me, Rishi Tea, and the hashtag radically loved Rishi for your chance to win an entire matcha essentials tea set which those of you that know me know that this is like the ultimate gift so for those of you that are interested go on instagram now snap a picture of what your tea ritual looks like and get ready to experience the best tea you've ever tried in your life Rishi tea is my ultimate favorite i cannot wait to share this experience with you Black Girl and Ohm creates space for women of color to breathe easy. I was recently in Chicago and I had the privilege of interviewing Lauren Ash and Dion Ivory, who are the podcast hosts for Black Girl and Ohm. This is a holistic wellness podcast that's all about inner beauty for women of color. They encourage self care, self love, self empowerment, and are so incredibly passionate about this work and they're so incredibly wise. I think what they're doing is incredible. They are bringing a voice and passion and power to a community that otherwise may have not had a voice. I think it's important for us to continue to learn and to work to cultivate richer understandings of what it means to be healthy and beautiful from the inside and out. And I really believe that they do just that. They joined me in my hotel room and we hung out for hours and I am just so blown away by the accolades that these girls have received they're so incredibly talented and smart and i feel so honored and privileged to be a part of the same community as them i can't wait to hear what you thought here's lauren and dion i'm sitting here with dion and lauren and we're besties already (laughs) yes and we're uh we're sitting in my hotel room they uh they came to visit me because i was lonely (laughs) and uh, i'm so happy to have you guys here thank you so much for coming of course we're excited to be here a great time already i've been listening to the podcast for uh i don't know i think when I emailed you, like, maybe a month ago. Yeah. And I, I literally binged the whole first season. I was like, what? I, how did I not know about it? Oh. Uh, I felt totally major FOMO. <laughs> and uh, and I'm so happy that I found it, especially right before I was coming to Chicago mm-hmm. because when I found out you were here, I was like, oh, I have to meet you yes. guys. Like, I have to. There's just no way that I can't, yes. you know? Um, I love everything that you guys are doing, everything that you guys talk about. I think it's so relevant, and I think it's just 
medicine that is needed right now and yeah. I'm just really excited to have you guys thank you thank, Great. you thank you same here your podcast is obviously amazing yes. oh we were giving me my exactly giving me my life this morning <laughs> we were oh, listening no. to your um latest one about habits Intentions. and oh, being intentional yeah. and then I also listened to your one with Danielle Laporte oh, who yeah. I've been just loving since desire map and yeah. fire starter sessions actually, yeah so yeah yeah that's great. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. <laughs> Let's listen to that. But I think that, you know, part of the reason why, uh, I mean, I love what I do and I know that you guys love what you do. Mm -hmm. And I think that the collective is really to be able to have the forum to talk about things that are important to us and to reach people, mm -hmm. you know, that need it and that we are passionate about helping and providing information. So I think that we obviously share the same same code, right. the same like path. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so for the people that are listening that don't know who you guys are, and I'll let you guys answer separately, um, Lauren, you can go ahead and just give us a, a little bit of history and background about you and how you started sure. and your yogic path and why yeah. you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. So yeah, my name is Lauren Ash, and I'm the founder and creative director of Black Girl Gnome. And um, this upcoming November 2017 will be three years of Black Girl and Home. So Black Girl and Home, kind of the seeds for BGIO were planted about four years ago. Um, maybe a little bit more, actually. Yeah, way more. Because I was in grad school and I was stressed out. I needed a release, so I turned to yoga from a very practical place. Yeah. So I wasn't turning to it like, oh my god, I'm all about this. <laughs> you know, this spiritual path, this holistic path, I was more so just like, I need a release in my body because I'm stressed out. Um, so I started practicing yoga and of course I noticed, um, and I say of course because I was at Purdue and it's, you know, West Lafayette, Indiana doesn't have a whole lot of diversity. So uh, the yoga studios that I was practicing at consistently, I was usually the only woman of color. Um, I never had a black yoga instructor guiding me. It was just very, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. very um, vanilla. So yay, I <laughs> I started to kind of just think about these things because, of course, like as a graduate student, I was studying like black feminism and like a lot about the history of like you know my ancestors. And so yeah. these two worlds at the time weren't really connected. I loved yoga. I loved wellness. I loved the people that I was practicing with, but there wasn't a connection with what my other passions were in the world. Right. 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 So fast forward, I eventually find myself in Chicago, which was all serendipity, and that's a whole other story. And um, I uh, was looking for ultimately my purpose. <laughs> that's really what it is in hindsight. Um, I had a nine-to-five job that I was completely unfulfilled within. I had all these passions of building community with, you know, women of color in particular, black women specifically, and uh, I loved yoga. So I was like, let me just like do yoga teacher training so that I can learn and deepen my own understanding of the practice. And pretty much as soon as I started, and I literally signed up for yoga teacher training the day it started, I started to think about how I could connect those two passions, you know? And I was practicing one day and the phrase black girl in Om came to me, you know, me being a black girl and in Om, you know, being in that vibration, being someone who's embracing all that life presents, being okay with that, accepting of it. And, um, once I landed in this space of I want to start and to create and manifest this platform that I see in my mind, Black Girl Gnome, everything started falling into place and I started to actually finally connect with the right people in Chicago. Because Chicago is a very hard city to navigate if you're here without connections, and I was certainly here without connections. Mm -hmm. I had been in Chicago for a year, but I had not really connected with people who are now like my community. Mm -hmm. But once I landed into my purpose, that's when it started happening. So I met um, a great friend of mine now, he's an artist, RJ Eldridge. I just literally met him because he looked cool and he had a camera at this art <laughs> festival. <laughs> Started telling him about Black Girl Gnome and he basically was like, the time is now for this. Like, yeah. he's lived in Chicago for quite some time and he was like, this is who you need to talk to. Yeah. Next thing I know, I'm talking with this another amazing soul, Janice Bond, who I like kind of word vomited all of my preliminary ideas about BGIO to. And she was just like, great, when do you want to start? And I was like, uh, you know, and I was being all like, 
half in, half out. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, she was just like, nope, you can start in two weeks. You can use my condo to start guiding your sessions, um, get comfortable teaching yoga, and the rest will go from there. So that's really the origin story of BGIL. And that's very much the truth. Like, it started from there, and everything really took off from there. And fast forward almost three full years later, podcasts, publication, yeah amazing social media platforms where we engage with women of color who feel underrepresented and are underrepresented within mm-hmm. wellness mm-hmm. and we center them in the conversation and we make their needs a priority um creative agency <laughs> amazing community that we in- engage with locally as well as nationally when we travel so it's been incredible yeah. it's been absolutely incredible oh that's so it's so great and it really just makes me it like warms my heart and it gives me chills because I just I love everything that you're creating and you could definitely see how all those seeds that you planted back then are really mm-hmm. flourishing now absolutely and it's like it literally couldn't have come at a better time I think like mm-hmm. I think that this is just again something that's so needed right now and for us to be able to have this opportunity is really incredible Mm -hmm. so okay thank you (laughs) Dion Dion, you're next yes well um I'm Dion Ivory I am the art director for Black Girl in Ohm um my self-care and wellness journey really began when I met Lauren um and this is when I was still living in Houston Texas I actually moved to Chicago because of her (laughs) which is hilarious um but So, Zakia was the former art director, Mm -hmm. and, like, it was just divine timing with me coming up here because she wanted to transition out and, you know, just cultivate her her, her own creative practices, which we were totally and still are very supportive of. Um, And Lauren was like, okay, Dion, you know, it's time for you to come and and join (laughs) us, you know? Um, And we (laughs) admired each other from a distance for a very, very long time. So I knew that one day we would, you know, be in this space where we would be able to work together. Mm -hmm. And so Black Girl and Gnome was the start of that. So I officially joined in October as the visual content director. And then my role became art director in January. And it has been a very amazing experience. One, because I was very un, like unaware of wellness or just not educated on black women, you know, um, pursuing a holistic lifestyle, you know, or eating healthy. I'm from the South. You know, these things yeah, are yeah. kind of like just foreign territory. We don't talk about these things at all. You know, so it was very weird for me, but I was very intrigued and I was like, I want to know more about this because obviously mental health is important, yeah. you know, spiritual health, uh, physical health, all of those things. And so Lauren being this black woman cultivating this space that I've never even heard of in my life. I was just like, this is, this is something that I would like to be a part of. Um, and in my role of being art director, oh, it's just, it's been life changing, yeah. um, especially because we've been on tour and we've been going to different places where black women aren't able to be in like yoga spaces where it's a room full of like black and brown people, you know, and they're crying and they're pouring out all of these emotions about how it affects them. And it just makes me so sad. And it just, and it also makes me happy because Lauren is, is the person who's creating that for yeah. them, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm there to visually document like, how much of an impact this is making on our community. Um, so, you know, like creating these beautiful shots of like these still moments of, of black women and other women of color just being in this very peaceful state where they're meditating um, and not being, uh, not necessarily being bombarded with just the chaos of life, yeah. you know, like yeah. the, the oppressions we go through, all of those yeah. things. So, I mean, it's just been great, and I love it. You know, I love creating beautiful graphics for this platform for black women. I love that black women are at the forefront of this gorgeous aesthetic because that mm-hmm. never happens. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, it just feels it's, it feels amazing to be in my position, and I love it. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, now I'm more aware of my own health and wellness. And so I've considered being vegan, you know, I'm like, okay, let me stop eating horrible, you know, (laughs) let me work out. Like these things are becoming more and more of a priority. And I think that, um, if other black women were aware of the benefits of it, they would, you know, then to become a part of wellness. Why do you guys think there's such a disparity in the spectrum of diversity in yoga classes? 
I mean, it, I think it, it, a lot of times goes back to representation, which is why I feel like Dion's work as a visual artist is just as important as my work as like a, a wellness facilitator and as a yoga instructor, you yeah. know, like it's the same thing, like me being embodied and being present and visible as a black woman teaching yoga, whether in an intentional space for and with other black women or whether I'm just teaching a class, you know, if I happen to teach a workshop that's open to everybody, mm -hmm. that visible marker of, oh, that's a black woman and she does yoga, seeing me again and again and again will, you know, start to break down the notion that it's not something that we do. Right. And then with Dion, as an artist, mm -hmm. creating these beautiful photographic depictions of black women, practicing yoga, or just being happy, or just being a community, that is the same thing, you know what I mean? I think that's why immediately um, our social platforms were so, and still continue to be, such um, an impactful thing for so many people. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you don't really see that as much. You see it a lot more now, but like even you know, three years ago when I started Black Girl Normal, it was just like, you didn't see it. Yeah, you didn't. I, I agree, definitely. It's I feel that having a, a social platform has really changed our perception uh, uh, as to what we think the norm is, mm -hmm. which is super helpful now, you know, but I think that there obviously still is some, you know, disparity and some differences that we need to, like, move past and, and kind of continue to put the word out there to show that, you know, there, there is a gap and it's obvious and like we need to do our work to continue to, you know, bring yoga to everyone, especially people of color, mm -hmm. you know, um, it was interesting, you know, after listening to, to you guys and like all the work that you do, um, I thought about, I wrote this article, uh, I don't know, maybe it was like two, a year ago, or two years ago where, um, I was talking to my, my father about meditation and he's like, well, meditation is for rich people. Like I can't do that. And I'm like, what do you, what? I was totally like, that's so true. totally yeah. in shock. Like I didn't understand. And like yoga, like he's like, oh no, that's like for, you know, like people that have money, like mm -hmm. that's a privileged thing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You're my father. Like yeah. I've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you still believe that? I'm mm -hmm. like, even after all the work that I've done and all the, the, the events that I've done and like the classes that I've taught, like, and yeah. you see, like, but he's, there's still that core belief, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I know that that's like a, a financial disposition too, but I think it's, it's both. I think yeah. it, it definitely covers the spectrum of, uh, color and also socioeconomic factors, you mm -hmm. know? So how do you think we can really begin to change? Because you know, it's true, right? It's like Absolutely. that belief is yeah. there. So how can we begin to to change that, you know, like, aside from the, the visual, which I think is huge, especially mm -hmm. utilizing platforms yeah. like social media to, to set that message out there. But what else do you think we can do in order to begin to change that mm -hmm. or have a, a real conversation about it and not pretend like it's not happening either? Right. That's another thing. Right? I think that the fact that you, when you exclude people from something for a very, very long time, you create this notion that like um these people belong here these people belong over there you know and i feel like we can start with inclusion like you were saying earlier like when you applied for some jobs like based on your last name people yeah. weren't going to let you in that space That's true. um and i feel like when we continue to do that we perpetuate this notion that you don't belong and i feel like with black and brown people when we don't allow them or we don't make them feel comfortable in these white spaces you know mm -hmm. we're perpetuating exclu exclusion and then Black people or brown people feel like this is something that's not for me, yeah. you know? And I feel like that's the root of it, honestly. Yeah. Um, and so a lot more mindfulness, even yeah. in uh, mainstream yeah. spaces. Like, the stories that we hear while on our yoga tour are really sad. Like, yeah. I, I was in Brooklyn a couple weeks ago. Dion wasn't at this workshop, and I missed her dearly. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a woman who, um, re a black woman, she's actually African as well. She's... Um, I forget where she's from, but she only came to the U.S. A, a few years ago. She recently started her own yoga studio, which is amazing, in Brooklyn. And she told me that um, she was, you know, attending again and again this studio. Like, it was her studio home. But all the time, she would get questions of, oh, are you the cleaning person? And, um, oh, are you, like, going to, you know, keep your hair that way? Like, she wore, like, a scarf on her hair or something like that. You know, just, like, calling attention the fact that she was like different or other yes, in this space exactly and it's like you know like there are things that everybody can do 
you know, to make people of all different backgrounds feel safe and comfortable and included, you know, a sense of belonging. Absolutely. Um, so, no, really, yeah. yeah, you know, and it's, it's nothing really, it's, it's basic yoga too. It's yeah. Like, it's what yoga <laughs> stand, like, that's what yoga is. It's union, yes. right? And it's like, it's supposed to like, <laughs> thank yes. you. So the hypocrisy, yeah. you know, it's like, this is supposed to be the safe space for yeah. everyone to come in and feel free and be yeah. yourself. Yeah. And you have people asking you, are you the cleaning lady? Like, yeah. and yeah. that would immediately turn you off. I would literally leave. Like, like I told her yeah. I was surprised that she even went back after that happened. She's um, more of a yogi than I am. Yeah. You know? And she said that she started yeah. to just go to put herself in the back of the room all the time. And I was like, that makes me so sad. Oh, God. So, yeah, I think it's, it's as a heart, it's like not pretending as if discrimination mm -hmm. won't enter in the yoga spaces, you know? Yeah. Because it does. Like, this is the world we live in. If, you, yeah. if you're not proactive about trying to create an inclusive environment, it's not going to be inclusive. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that definitely, uh, you know, the, the people who are managing a space or the people that are in charge of creating a space, mm -hmm. whether you're a teacher or you're a studio owner, I think that the onus definitely comes on them to set the example to how to treat people, you know, because yes. that's, that's like our first experience to come into a space to practice with the community, mm -hmm. you know, and if we don't have that set right at the gate, then, you know, mm -hmm. we're not going to have a good experience. And I think oftentimes... That's kind of, my aunt was telling me this, uh, she told me this, like, you know, a couple of months ago, I was telling her, she lives in um, Northern California, it's like the armpit of California, basically, <laughs> oh, said. That's sorry, hilarious. <laughs> it really is, uh, but I told her she needed to go do yoga, and she found a studio, she drove 45 minutes out, of course there's not going to be a good yoga studio, or like any yoga, where she was. So she drove 45 minutes out and, you know, she just, she said she walked in and the class had just ended, but like she was trying to get information and they wouldn't, they wouldn't give her any, That's, um... they wouldn't give her any information. And I'm just like, well, what do you mean? Were they out of schedules? Like, I don't, I'm confused. Like I'm still right. Confused. I'm like, I'm confused yeah. that somebody would not give you the time of day really. And I'm like, okay, like maybe I don't know what they thought I'm like did they think that like you didn't have any money to pay for a class or well, like what stereotypes, you know yeah. so so anyway you know that was her experience but I mean she's still like you know attempting it and like mm -hmm. you know I send her like little videos to do and stuff yeah. and to me I'm like just practice like yeah the thing is all of this is, is part of what we do just as yogis and as people like you don't have to actually practice yoga asana to be a yogi mm -hmm. yeah. right and so I think that it's it's so important for us to be able to set the example of openness mm -hmm. and acceptance. And I think that if more people did that, we would definitely have more barriers broken, yes. especially in, in this realm of a place that's supposed to be all about union and peace yes. and love and like acceptance. And I think that another thing it, it, it it just reminds me of that idea or that concept that like just because you do yoga doesn't mean you're not a dick, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> it's true because it's like it's an attitude thing. You go to a yoga class and you're, you know, having this like connection yeah. with like, you know, your higher self or the divine or whatever it is that you connect with when you're on your mat. The mat doesn't discriminate, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. you can really have this beautiful experience on the mat. But then if you leave the mat and then you go back into old patterning or old beliefs yeah. or you put yourself into a position where it gives you an opportunity to you know be an asshole then you know that's what's gonna happen yeah you know it's like it's a practice yeah so I don't really know what my point is with, with all that <laughs> I'm just maybe on a rant I'm snapping no yeah. I'm snapping. yeah I mean we're all feeling it <laughs> you know <laughs> tension <laughs> and heated <laughs> so, so okay so so saying all that you guys were on a tour well it's actually still underway Oh my goodness. <laughs> Tell me about the tour. Tell me what's going on. Where are you guys going? What are you doing? <laughs> so um, it's basically a response to many, many, many women of color, black women specifically, in multiple cities around the world who are like, you know, we see the work that you're doing with Black Girl No, we want this here in our city, you know? Mm -hmm. And these are in very diverse cities too, you know? 
um, where there are plenty of black women yoga instructors, um, but, slash and, <laughs> there is still not necessarily, and I don't want to say this across the board, but not necessarily um, specific spaces for and with women of color. And also, I've really been learning and recognizing that this is a particular gift of mine. So even if other people are doing it, um, the ways in which I'm doing it independently and through Black Girl Gnome are, are something that people are responding to well, you know? And I'm like, I'm owning that. I'm just like, this is my gift. So um, Dion is also on board as the visual um, storyteller, which mm -hmm. is amazing. It's something <laughs> that we've learned, and I'll let you speak to it as well, but like something that we've learned is to me just as important and powerful as the actual experience that's facilitated. Mm. So it's um, yoga and self-care for women of color tour. I guide yoga, meditation, and conversation. No one ever wants to leave. It's always uh -huh. sold out. It's always uh -huh. powerful. It's always transformative. And it's always a connective, like, tissue for mm -hmm. people in the, in the community that need to know each other. Mm -hmm. It's been amazing. So, so far we've gone to Atlanta, New York, Detroit, I went back to New York, <laughs> and there's more cities to come, but Dion, you should definitely share, like, because Dion's, I think, th has one of the most unique perspectives of it, because she's the photographer. Yeah. She's the she's fly on the wall. She's watching it all mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's telling the story through visuals. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I mean, I mentioned this earlier in the podcast, but this has been a very uh, life-changing experience for me, because... Like she said earlier, representation is so important. And for instance, like you have Obama, he's the president, right? So you're well, basically he was. well, he was. He's still my president. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, like so this. you know, you have he, him as the president, and you see photos of this man. It's like great, it's amazing. There's a little black boy who now sees this man, and he's like, I can be that. Before there were no images of black males being in a position that high, and now you do have that, and you have photos. You know what I'm saying? That live, they live on forever, and you have little black boys, like feeling like that can become a reality for them. Same with yoga. Yeah. For like, prior to meeting Lauren, yoga what? Yoga who? Like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that world. But because I'm able to visually document and story tell uh, about these black women, I'm engaging in a practice that can be looked down upon or from people who feel like well black people shouldn't be doing this period or why are black people doing this in the first place it's just I, I feel like creating these images just allows for black women to see themselves in a space that they never get to yeah ever like I said earlier because we we go through oppression we deal with racism we deal with relationship problems we deal with mental depression health mental issues. health exactly all of those things like affect us, you know, and when there's a black woman who's able to look at herself like this in Ohm or mm -hmm. she's meditating, she's like, oh my God, like it's just this place of serenity, yeah. you know, and I would want anybody to experience that. Yeah. And I hope that it would remind you how powerful that moment was yeah. and to encourage you to continue doing it because it's benefiting your spirit, you know, it's benefiting your soul, you know? <laughs> and so... I mean, and for me, it makes me want to continue to narrate this story and create books so that everyone yeah. around the world can see these beautiful and gorgeous photos of black women in wellness, black women in meditation, black women sitting still. The act of sitting still alone is a hassle. Yes. Because yeah. we're all running around like, you know, chickens with our heads cut off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the value of like slowing down and sitting still, reflecting and introspecting, all of that is so necessary. And I just feel like, the imagery part of what we're doing is vital to self-care. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Who, uh, and I'll ask you both to answer this, but who, who's influenced you the most in your just path and your career and, and mm -hmm. the work that you're doing now? Wow. If you had to name a person. That's a great question. That is a great question. One that I've actually never been asked, I don't think. Um, so honestly, it's really interesting, but I have a few answers. Number one, <laughs> Summer Cushman, who's actually a white woman, um, but she was one of the first yoga teachers that I had who got me to realize the depth of the yoga practice mm -hmm. as, a, as a holistic practice. Um, and also, she was like my spiritual advisor for a little bit. <laughs> so when I was at Purdue, like I said, yeah. practicing yoga for the first time, there was this breakup that I went through that now I wouldn't even give the time of day, but it, at the time was devastating for me. 
because I was just all so, had that. Is it always the case? We've all, yes. Oh god. And I probably at the time needed a therapist, but I didn't know where one was. So, and I knew this woman She's dying right now, like <laughs> cracking up. And I knew that this woman who I practiced yoga with was also she went to Div- divinity school, so okay. she was also a spiritual guide. Okay. So she had this way of merging both yoga and like you know breath practices with like just supporting someone going through it. Right. So I started to go to her, and then she was like, you know, there's this Yoga for Transformation course coming up at the studio. You should sign up. It was an eight-week course where you basically went through all the eight limbs of yoga. And that was when I was like, wow, asana, which you spoke to this earlier, the physical practice of yoga is one of eight. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, Uh for Christians, like the Bible, like Mm -hmm. if you're just looking at one chapter out of all the books, you're not really getting the whole benefit. At all. So it's like, it's amazing to know that like, there is this practice and I need to get back to it. Like I need to just restudy all of the other limbs. But um, she's one of the first, you know, major influences. And then I would also say um, a lot of amazing black women in the past who have shown the power and the importance of black women in community with one another, you know, and who have spoken to that, whether through text or through um, their art or through, their practices, but, you know, people like Audre Lorde, Bell Hooks, all the women who mm-hmm. came together with the Combahee River Collective and was like, this is what womanism is. This is what yeah. the black feminist mm-hmm. looks like. Yeah. Because black grown is, at the end of the day, very much rooted in, you know, the power of us as black women yeah. and what happens when we come together. And every single time we ha- have a stop on the yoga mm-hmm. tour, every single time I guide self-care Sunday here in Chicago for a black grown home, I'm reminded of the power of like how sacred it is and how special it is to have our own space. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. That's powerful. It was powerful. Yeah. That's why she's my, um, she's my person. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, yeah, she's my <laughs> <laughs> It is. I literally just like I felt that. That's Aww. very powerful. Thank you. Uh, okay, Dion. Okay. Go. Well, continuing on what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, I definitely credit Lauren for just being an inspiring force in my life, because like talking to her and just seeing her move and like just be so confident and. Just everything, you know, like she's smart and she's beautiful and she's doing wellness and she's bringing black women together. Like it really, really pushes me to just, you know, be as amazing in my field of creativity. Mm -hmm. Um, And like I said, I my first topics or first conversations that I engaged with um, regarding, you know, wellness and self-care and all that stuff is because of her. Like. And from her, like, I was able to experience the Alex L's and the Nakisha Bronsons and mm-hmm. all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But prior, I mean, prior to me meeting her, I don't think I would have been as involved with this whole realm of holistic living. So, yeah. Well, yeah. and off that, I want to say something that I've recently realized. Like, you've inspired me, too. Like, re-inspired my wellness practice. Because, like, okay, and we were kind of talking about this earlier. Yeah. Um, but, like... You know, I don't think it's uncommon for yoga teachers or for anyone guiding something to kind of lose the motivation in their own practice. Oh, yeah. Because we're guiding it so much for other people, right? Yeah. But Dion, Dion being inspired by me (laughs) and by Black Girl more broadly and then getting excited and making changes in her life has literally made me be like, what do I need to have a spark in? What do I need to try out now? Oh, she's doing these supplements. Oh, she's considering being vegan and doing this, like, cleanse. Like, I need to be doing this. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you just get into the rhythm of doing things just to do them or, like, just get stagnant. And so it's, yeah, it's inspired me. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. (laughs) That's so sweet. That's good. You guys can continue to inspire each other. (laughs) Yeah, which is really amazing. So what's next? for you guys what's happening now what what kind of update I know the the other thing I wanted to kind of speak to is um you know like how you both kind of deal with change and transition because I know there's been some changes in transition and you just moved up to Chicago Mm -hmm. from Houston and you know you're just doing so much with everything that's going on and now you guys together um I'm just curious as to how I'm like the the question is I'm like how are you guys keeping it together? <laughs> That's really the question. Yeah, it's so hilarious. But um, essentially, like, what sort of how are you guys staying grounded and how are you guys staying on on your vision and 
even in your own personal lives dealing with like all of the the career changes and like moving and building a, a new community essentially mm-hmm. and, and all of those things like um I know for me like keeping my eyes on the right thing helps me to always walk in my purpose like like knowing who I am in the process of like everything that I'm doing because it's a lot you know yeah. you can be you know pressured to become something you're not or whatever for me I just that's how I stay grounded I just keep my eye on the prize and I know that what I'm doing is 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 bigger than me you know what I'm saying? It's like there's a bigger picture to all of this. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm always serving. I, I serve through my art. And that's a healing tool. Mm-hmm. Um, and it helps me to stay motivated all the time because yeah. I realize the impact that I'm having on black women or yes. just women of color or women, period. You know, yeah. everybody is inspired. And, yes. I, and I love that. And it just it keeps me motivated. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I would say it's that. beautiful. Yeah. Um, I would say I'm actually in a period of like regrounding myself. Mm. So Deanna and I yesterday we recorded um, an amazing podcast mm-hmm. with Francesca. Hey Fran, hey, and mm-hmm. it was a amazing. amazing. Oh, I can't wait! <laughs> I'm so excited. And one of the things that I really got from that conversation, and I really admired from her in the past, is that she has. Um, healthy boundaries and very intentional boundaries around um, her connection to the digital space and social media and what she chooses to share there and then her own energy and her own intentional um, taking in of you know wisdom and learning Mm -hmm. and knowledge about wellness and I feel like I've gotten to this space where I need to like do some thinking around that and reprioritize so actually like literally from her conversation Yesterday, I changed, like, how I approached my day. <laughs> like, I literally timed my use of social media. Uh-huh. I limited it to just two hours because we all know you oh, mindlessly man. click to Instagram. You mindlessly click to Twitter. You mindlessly click to whatever Facebook else. Facebook and whatever. Snapchat. As much as you want. And then guess what? You spend mm. five hours on there for no reason when it all adds up. You know what I mean? Same with email, you know? Yes, your inbox is important, but it's not everything. And so I'm really coming back to my why. I did this work because, Mm -hmm. in the beginning, because it mattered to me. I did this work in the beginning because I loved yoga. I did this work in the beginning because I was interested in all these healing modalities. Like, last night I started reading this chakra book because I've been saying for the past few years that I want to go deeper into them. And I read more about them yesterday than I have in the past, like, month. You know what I mean? So, I'm going back to this place of really inputting into my own self and really finding balance first and foremost for myself. Yeah. And then still being giving of myself, but in much more mindful ways than I have been lately. It reminds me of this quote, too, that I always say. It's, remember why you started. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. that totally connects to what you yes. just said. I mean, if you remember why you started, yeah. just your beginnings and the why and how passionate you are, I think that's a great way to stay grounded. Yes. Absolutely. Well, I also want to, just going back to, like, the original question, I know I'm kind of jumping around. I just get really excited, and I want to ask you guys a lot of things, and we don't have so much time, so I'm like, okay, what's what's important? (laughs) Because the other thing, too, just as women and entrepreneurs, like, you're inspiring so many people. Right. And and I think it's very, very uh, beautiful and inspiring and and powerful to see you both just, like, doing what you're doing, Mm -hmm. you know, so... As far as the influence that you're having on young women out there, mm-hmm. like, I think what you're doing is just incredible. Thank so, you. thank you guys for thank doing you. that. I yeah. think it's so, it's so great to be able to, I mean, think about even, like, for me, like, growing up, there wasn't very many, like, women, like, that, that were very showcased, and that wasn't because they weren't out there. It's yeah. just because what was shown, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I think that now, having the platforms that we do, it's, it's so important to, to show uh, diversity and to show Mm -hmm. women and power and just community and how, uh, we have voices Mm -hmm. and we can express them and it's powerful to express Mm -hmm. them. Um, how important is your community to what you guys do? It's an integral part of Yes. It's literally it's like everything. everything. <laughs> Seriously. Like, yes, we looked at each other at the same moment with that in mind. Yes. Like, it's literally yes. everything. Yes. I draw from my community, you know? Like, I want to empower my community. I look like my community. Like, I share the same narrative, in a sense, with my community, you know? Like, yeah. everything that I do is centered around 
blackness. Like, if I'm being transparent and I'm being authentic, I can only pull from the things that I actually know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And because I know these things, um, like, I don't have to, to be a fraud, you know? Yeah. Like, the art that I create, um, the words that I create, all of these things, uh, I feel like black people can resonate with because we know. Like, we don't even have to say anything. Like, we can give each other a look <laughs> and, and you know what I'm saying, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, I feel like that's so beautiful. You can have, yes. oh my God, this reminds me of Jamila, uh, Jamila Woods, yeah. and she was talking about that game. Yes. It was like four women or something. They didn't know each other, and somebody was like, oh, let's play um, the little pack game or oh, something. Oh, yeah. What's yeah. this called? What is that called? Oh my God. Oh. Uh, We're uh, like padding and not even... <laughs> I know. <laughs> Charades over here. Yeah. Oh, Patty Cake. Patty Cake. Patty Cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something, yes. something, yeah. some game like that. Yes. And she was just like, we didn't know each other. And like, we just came together and we just yes. shared that moment. And I was just like, yes. yes. Like, that is so, so powerful. You have a, t we're all black, but we share different experiences. Yeah. But it's like, we can all come together because there are some commonalities yes. and reoccurring themes that black people go through. Yes. You know? So I just, I love that. I think yeah. it's so magical. Yeah. yeah. I think it's so magical. Yeah, I mean, community is everything for me, too, because, like, I started BGIO because I wanted it for myself, and then to see a community so quickly get energized around right. it, and I don't mean quick in, like, a, like a follower sense. I mean, like, day one, November Namaste, which was the first series I ever <laughs> facilitated in the apartment of my too. mentor's, you know, living room, um... Like, my friends showed up. Like, in the beginning, it was just my friends and, like, word of mouth, like, friends of friends. And it was just, like, you know, 15 people. But to me, that was, like, amazing because it was, like, yeah, this is needed. So, um, I feel like every single time that, like, I speak at, like, a, a panel or if I'm traveling and I'm walking down the street and someone's, like, oh, my God, are you a black girl? And I'm, like, that's amazing to me because it's, like... This work is so important and has literally, like, changed people's lives. Right. Like, there are women who are like, I started yoga because I heard you talk about it on your podcast. I became a yoga teacher because you're a yoga teacher. You know what I mean? And that's, like, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah. like, so amazing to know that, like, you literally have an impact on someone's, like, well-being. And yeah. then on the well-being of other people. Because we all know that, like, the more that you invest in your own self in ways that, like, benefit your spirituality your health your mind that impacts other people people ask questions people see you change yeah it's amazing to me yeah oh i love that it's definitely an integral part as you said mm -hmm. to building uh to building a a, a more powerful presence in the world with like-minded people that can continue to hold each other up and yeah. just build bigger things. Yeah, and you're uh, powerful together. Yes. You know, you come together and all of you guys are doing amazing things. Like, yeah. And that's what we're all about. Yeah. Like, Lauren and I, we're together, you already know, it's black women, <laughs> it's like magic, <laughs> it's like community, it's like dopeness, it's just great. <laughs> I know y'all are dying, but I'm being so serious. Like, that's just what we do. Yes. Like, yeah. that's, you know, and... Oh, my God. We also wanted to share something else that we um, recently created together. So, Lifestyle with Ivory Nash. And we have recently discovered the enormity of what it is. Like, yes. We created it thinking it was one thing, and now another layer has been added to the cake. Oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> to the cake. So, you know, back in the fall when Dion moved to Chicago from mm -hmm. Houston, we obviously, like, knew, like, she was going to be a part of Black Girl Gnome. That was already, like, a duh. Yeah. But... What we didn't know was that something else was cooking. So <laughs> I guided a mindfulness um, series at Soho House Chicago, and I pulled Dion in. I commissioned her to create these mantra cards so that everyone who came to my sessions could walk away with a visual, beautiful reminder, right? Mm -hmm. So I put some prompts there for their mantras, and then she created this beautiful illustration because she's an amazing illustrator. And that same week, she had been, like, having these, like, I mean, basically, God was talking to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As usual. And <laughs> having these, like, moments of realization about basically creating something with me at the same time that I was, like, being sparked even deeper after having her create this art. Like, wait, this should just be a recurring thing. Like, we should be right collaborating on these beautiful, tangible, tangible goods. Yeah. Yeah that remind women of color in particular about the importance of being present or the importance of whatever, you know? Yeah. So from that, we created Lifestyle with Ivory Nash, 
which is now, you know, we create illustrations and affirmations for women of color through cards, through products, journals, th- journals tote bags, which yeah. we just released. Yes. What? Yeah. Literally, oh my God, can yes. we, two days I mean, ago. They be, oh, so they'll be out. So by the time people are listening to this yes. podcast, they can get them. Yes. 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 We're going to put the links on yes. the show notes, my yes. friends. If you're listening, <laughs> just click the show notes yes. and you're going to be able to get them. <laughs> They're going to fly. And they just gifted me one of them. And yes. it's just, yes. it's so beautiful. And I'm, I'm just so grateful. Yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to like not get emotional, especially I'm like PMSing right now. But <laughs> side note, it's just like, it really just makes my heart just so warm and like just fuzzy. Fuzzy. <laughs> And full because I just, I love it and and I'm just so happy and it makes me really hopeful, uh, especially during a time where it feels like there's, there's none. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's like a breath of fresh air. Thank you. you. To be able to have that and to know that these things are happening. Okay, so now, um, so that's part of what's next. What else? Is there anything else? I know that you said you recorded some uh, meditations or an EP, a meditation, oh, I think I heard yes. This. So I'm in the process of working that, keyword in the process. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> that look. I've just learned, and that relates to my balancing. Like, I, I actually canceled something that I was going to do this weekend to do it because I need to be in the right space to do it. Yeah. I cannot create something this major because I've known that I've wanted to do this for over a year. Create audio meditations geared toward women of color, like like 40 minutes worth, you know? Listen to this, feel blissed out, feel energized, feel like your intention is reset. I wanted to cover a variety of topics and I can't create that if I'm not feeling good. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been feeling good, but I've been feeling good in like a, I've been producing a lot way. And yes. so I'm trying to get back to this like space of like just grounding yeah. and like. Refilling your cup. Exactly. So that, it's coming and it's going to be released this, this spring slash summer, but I need to be, you, you know. To be in it. Yeah. So I'm taking down. some time to yeah. be in the sun, to relax, to reflect, mm-hmm. to read yeah. You know, to refuel myself yeah. for that. That's beautiful. Good. I'm, what am I doing? Uh, <laughs> a lot. A lot. That's why, that's always a hard question Your for me to answer. Your book projects? Yes. So I have been illustrating um, books by black women authors, which makes me happy. I'm like, oh God, yes. Because I want black women to read. <laughs> and I love when black people write. I'm like, I, and then I get to illustrate for it. Like, that's just, it's amazing. And then, so the lady sent me the, the PDF preview and... I I cried because it is absolutely mm. gorgeous. It's one thing for you, like you to have these ideas in your mind, and then when you see like your 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 vision in somebody else's hand, like that feeling is just immeasurable. You know. You should share where some of your past illustrations are because they're books oh, that I feel yes. like her listeners would love. Yeah. So if you guys are fans of Alex L, which I'm sure you are, um, she just released Neon Soul, and I illustrated that and. Y'all, it is it's phenomenal. It is gorgeous. It is. I did those illustrations in one week, and I am just shocked at how amazing they are. Because it was so many of them, oh. but it was stunning. And I also illustrated um, "Anonymous" by Anissa A. Ali, and uh, once again, it's very, very beautiful. It's about relationships and self-love like and, and self love. Yes, oh. all of that. Oh my god, we had her on our podcast too. Yes, she's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And I'm, uh, another book is going to be released in June. It's called My Way Would Do Just Fine. I didn't know the, wor- the name of it till now. It's, oh. At, oh my God, it's, 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 this one was different because, like, there was, like, one, there was a lady named Junie or something. And, like, I'm just illustrating Junie without, like, throughout the story. Whereas other books, I just illustrated random things. Oh, yeah. so you had a character oh, yes. developed. Yeah. Dion can do anything. She can do anything. In the future, she's going to be animating in wow. the future, she's going to be Prophesy, girl. branding restaurants. That's in the, the future, goal. she's yes. going to be creating beautiful designs and illustrations for music videos. Like, she can literally, in the past year, you've grown so much as an artist. Mm-hmm. And you've responded to 
any request. You'd be like, I can do it. Oh my and that's god. That's such a powerful yes. message for women, I feel yeah. like in general. Like yeah. not to shrink or shy away from opportunities, but to like go after them and just be like, absolutely, I'm about to figure this out. Yeah, that's literally what my whole life is about. One of my favorite quotes is like, don't be afraid to explore your capabilities. Cause yes. when you get started doing something, you may not know where it's gonna lead you to, mm. but like God will continue to peel back layers and yes. you'll be like, Oh, I can do this yes. too. I can yeah. do that. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing that. I'm also illustrating a children's clothing line which I haven't told you I know it's like really random and I'm you know <laughs> conti continuously branding love it. uh branding uh women-owned uh businesses yes. and stuff so I'm just doing a lot and it's wow. all with black women and, and women of color and yeah. it's art and it's fantastic it's I great love that. thank oh, you that's so great you guys are just uh just stay here with me <laughs> This is so inspiring and like so good. It makes just, just makes me feel so you. good. No, I love it. I love it. Um, okay, so just before we wrap up, I have just a couple more questions to ask you guys. Um, number one is, what are some words of wisdom that you live by? Ooh. Let's start with that. So one of my favorite mantras that my best friend Chelsea Frazier always tells me <laughs> is um, nothing that is for you can be taken from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, perspective. Like, don't get stressed out. Don't dwell when there's a missed opportunity. Right before we walked in here today, actually, I, pu I found an email oh, yeah. about, a, to me, what could be a missed opportunity, but guess what? And it was something major that I really wanted. But guess what? Something else out there is going to come my way. Maybe right now is in the right time. Maybe this particular relationship or opportunity for reasons I will never know was just not right. So yeah. it's about accepting and embracing when those things happen because it wasn't for you. And yeah. then on the converse, what's taken from you was never for you or what's taken from you is supposed to be taken from you at that time. So, you know, you can use that and apply that to broken relationships or, you know, mm -hmm. in business, like, if something happens with someone that seems horrible in the moment, trust that it's what's supposed to happen yeah. and allow it to just fade away. Mm. I have one that I recently shared on um, Alex L's podcast. It's uh, authenticity can take you places imitation can't. And I, I say that because, first of all, that was literally given to me from God. Like, I know. I was like, she asked me. She was like, what's a quote that you have? I was like, ooh. And then... <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to say. And then that quote like came instantly. I was like, thank you. <laughs> um, and she was like, girl, yes. I was like, yes. I was like, this is, this is the quote to live by. Especially, I mean, as a creative or just somebody who's just creating a space. Like, yeah. you know, you can feel like your idea isn't good enough. Or you have to kind of like mimic somebody else's like way of, of creating. And it's just like, no. Yeah. Like, there is so much power in you staying true to who you are. Yeah. Um, and just you know, allowing God to, like, flourish you. Yes. Yeah. Like, he gave you the vision. Trust that. Do what he told you to do. Stay in your lane. And, like, everything will fall into place. Yes. And people will notice you because you look like you. Yeah. You know? you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's my quote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I just wanted to, like, keep, I'm like, just keep talking. About that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's great. hilarious. I'm going to write a book about it. Okay, no, yep. perfect. I'm going to read it, and I'm going to buy, like, 100 million copies yes. of it yep. and, like, yes. give it to everyone. <laughs> uh, okay, so final, final question here for you mm -hmm. guys. So both of you know that I created Radically Loved as a forum for people to come to to get inspired or learn about yoga and meditation mm -hmm. and how these modalities can help enrich their lives uh -huh. and that yoga is for everybody yes and that we are radically loved by god source or higher power whatever mm -hmm. you believe in there is a force mm -hmm. that right. is holding this earth together and that the universe conspires for us and not against us mm -hmm. And so the questions to you, there, and it's twofold, and, and I'll let you both answer it. But the first one is, how do you feel radically loved? And what do you radically love? Ooh. I love that. Yeah. Yes. Great. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you are, I mean, I already know. I was going to let you speak first. <laughs> Dion, you go. Yeah, you go first. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I feel radically loved um by the lord 
and my husband. Like, like I am unconditionally loved. I can't even, it's literally immeasurable, the amount of love that I, I feel or that I'm given on a daily basis, you know? And it makes me feel like I can do anything. It makes me feel beautiful even when I feel like I'm physically looking ratchet as hell. You know, <laughs> seriously, these are these are serious things. Yeah. Um, but I, I just feel so comfortable in my skin. You know, I feel comfortable because it's like, I knew that God took his time with me. And he's like always talking to me, always opening doors, mm -hmm. like just, I'm going to stop before I cry. But yeah, that's my, yeah. that's my answer. Two things, or you said something that I, I radically love. Yeah. Um, obviously the Lord, my husband, um, and I mean, it's, I love everything. Like mm -hmm. after that, I love everything. I love all of my friends, their family. They taught me how to love, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I love life because I'm constantly serving a community who's like oppressed and marginalized. Mm -hmm. I just, I love everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Dion. Yeah. Laura. Yeah, I feel radically loved by God because when I look at like, especially the past three years, like since starting this journey in particular, I see that, like, everything really did happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm, I'm constantly having ideas. Like, I'm blessed to be able to have ideas right. that are unique and that are put out into the world and then supported. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't always happen. Or sometimes you get ideas but you don't listen to it. But mm -hmm. I've seen how again and again, like, my saying yes and just doing this, you know what I mean, in the service of a greater vision, mm -hmm. has been supported. And I don't credit that to me. You know, I credit that to God blessing me with right. people around me who support the vision. Right. And um, just with, like, opportunities that, like, astound me again and again, you know. Um, and I radically love this vision. <laughs> So, you know, at the end of the day, like, all of my projects, all of my, um, my ideas, like, always come back to women, black women, um, wellness, self-care, healing, and, like, I love that that gets to be, like, my yeah. path and my journey, and that's, like, amazing, like, mm -hmm. you know, I learned about four years ago that I just didn't really feel comfortable or okay with doing something for someone else you know um like I was just like realizing that like I had just a greater purpose and that it was something for me to explore you know what I mean mm -hmm. like so in the beginning I didn't foresee that it was going to be what it is now mm -hmm. but I saw something that I needed to explore and so yeah. I radically love that this gets to be my yeah, my vision like and my path I love that. Okay, yes. I have one more. Please. You were talking, I was like, man, I should have said that. Um, <laughs> I radically love myself because I feel like I love myself enough to like walk in, like, walk in faith and like do things that would normally scare me. Just yeah. be, just saying yes to yeah. like opportunities like you were speaking to earlier mm -hmm. um, or just saying yes to like discovering parts of myself through my creative work. You mm -hmm. know, and I feel like if I didn't love myself, I wouldn't be doing half the things that I'm doing because yeah. I would I would feel inadequate or I would feel like I'm, you know, I'm I, I'm not good enough or whatever. But mm -hmm. I, I radically do love myself yes. because I wouldn't be here yes. today if I didn't yeah. if I didn't, you know, trust God enough to say, you know, what? I accept the way you make me. I embrace the way you make me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's important for any creative, any woman, anybody like love yourself enough to like experience life you mm -hmm. know and joy and peace yeah all of that you know yeah, yeah i agree wow i radically love you both <laughs> <laughs> i'm so happy that you guys are here and i'm so grateful for all the work that you're doing and that you're going to continue to do i'm so so excited to see what more comes out of it yes. and just to see the i can't wait 
for the millions of women that are going to talk about you guys and how you guys impacted them and how you guys influenced them. So I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> They're the cutest right She's now. Like, <laughs> um, so where can people get in touch with you guys? Where can they follow you? Yes. Uh, where can they go to get more information? So in terms of the projects that we're a part of, Black Girl and Ohm, it's Black Girl, I-N-O-M on everything <laughs> yeah instagram twitter facebook um lifestyle with ivory and ash as we mentioned is our newest creation together and that's ivory and ash life on both um instagram as well as twitter and then lifestyle with ivory and ash on facebook um we have websites for both yes so blackgirlandome.com and Ivory and Ash Lifestyle.co. Co. Yes. <laughs> dot co. Dot co. Yes. Got it. And then personally, my handles are Hello Lauren Ash on every platform imaginable. <laughs> That's so funny. Imaginable. <laughs> Not really. imaginable. Um, mine uh, is uh, Dion Ivory. D E U N. Ivory like the color. Um, on everything. And uh, my website is Dion Ivory. Me. And then you can go there and explore all of my work. Yeah. yeah. We will, I'll put all the, all of, all of that, cool. okay. all those links, they'll be on the show notes. So for those of you listening, you can just click on the links and get more information and please follow them. And if you've not subscribed to the podcast, please do that now and you will not regret it. It's amazing. These girls are so talented <laughs> and so uh, full of knowledge and wise and beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Don't leave ever. Okay, thank you guys for listening. I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much for being here. We loved it. Thank you for your great questions. Thank you. Made you think. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am so excited to continue to do this. Please share this with your friends. Email us, message us on Instagram at Rosie Acosta or on Twitter at Rosie Acosta. Subscribe on iTunes, write a review. We love doing this, so please help us continue to keep this podcast going. Thanks for listening.